My first guest tonight comprise one of the most imaginative and successful acts in pop music. Let's take a look at a video from their new album, Touch. They will be appearing at the Capitol Theater in Passaic, March 23rd, and also at the Ritz here in New York City, March 27th through the 29th. Please welcome Dave Stewart and Annie Lennox, yeah! Eurythmics. Thank you very much for being here. The folks love you. That's nice. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the, the name. All last week I was saying the Eurythmics or the Eurythmics, but yeah. that's not right, is it? Well, it's like a title, really. So we just call ourselves Eurythmics. Yeah. It's um, it's a name taken from a a term that was given to a, a new approach to teaching music through movement back in the turn of the century. It was invented by a Frenchman, and uh, we just took it and stole it and changed it. <laughs> what was, what was uh, uh, briefly the, uh, his method of teaching, what, music through movement? What does that mean? Well, mm -hmm. instead of teaching children uh, how to understand music intellectually, he thought it was a better idea to do it physically. So there were certain steps taken and uh, certain movements. It's a little bit complex. But I was taught a little bit of that when I was at school. Did, did it seem to help you at all? Um, I think it had some effect. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what, now, what did you two do before you got together and before you started uh, working in a group together? Um, well, I was... Uh, I've never done anything else, actually. I ran away in the back of a group span when I was about 15 or something. That's good advice for the kids looking into that, yeah. isn't it? Uh, how old are you now? That's good advice for parents, too. <laughs> yeah. You're, you, how old are you, sir? I'm 31, then. So at 15, you just uh, packed it in and went off with the Who was the group? They were called the Amazing Blondel, and they played medieval music. Medieval music? <laughs> and uh, so uh, you got into their van after a show, and what happened? Yeah, well, <clears throat> while the roadies were packing up the gear, I just uh, climbed in and hid under a box. And then when we got to wherever they arrived, it was Scunthorpe, I think, somewhere obscure like that. I, uh, I jumped out and said, hello, I'm a stowaway kind uh -huh. of thing. And they immediately phoned the police, and I got... Uh, it was my first taste of real punishment. <laughs> uh, so what did your folks do when, when they came and got you? They didn't come and get me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were uh, really pleased about it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and then uh, shortly thereafter, you started performing in groups on your own? Um, not really, no. I, um, I started sort of moving their equipment around, yeah. and then... I used to watch their fingers every night and learn a few things, and in the end I used to go on before them and play. And then I became a medieval minstrel myself, and I used to play in the chicken courses of a medieval luncheon. <laughs> but the trouble was, it was all um, girls from factories on uh, holiday, you know, and yeah. they all used to do obscene things while I was trying to play the lute, so I had to leave. Are those, uh, is that group still together? Which one? The, the medieval uh, minstrel group? Oh, no, uh, one of them's, uh, well, we won't get into that, but... Then how did you and Annie meet? Do I tell? Yeah, you tell. Okay. Well, you know, it's just um, when you're trying to be a musician, you know, it's pretty hard going. So you always have to have a, a little job on the side to make some money. And I was waitressing, and I knew some guy that knew him uh -huh. and thought it would be a nice idea to introduce the two of us. So he came to the restaurant, and the manager of the restaurant saw him and said, is that drugged out, weird-looking guy... Is he a friend of yours? And I said, no, I don't know who he is. And I, was, I, I sneaked out, you know, met him, took to him. And then you two actually, from almost immediately, had a... Baby, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you, you lived together for a while? Uh, for uh, uh, a long time? Four, four, three or four years? A couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. And then we just, you know, anyway. Seemed like a long time. <laughs> How long was it? <laughs> It was about... How long have I known you for? Six, six, six years? Six years, three months, seven weeks, and a couple of days. Uh, about an hour. But, but uh, now, if this, is, if this is none of my business, but you're not, you're no longer... We don't go habits, no. You're no, no longer romantically no. involved. No. no. But you're, you still collaborate creatively. Oh, we collaborate. <laughs> <laughs> but... It, but is, is, that, is there extra tension there because of what you, you know, used to be involved in the past? Oh, yeah. I mean... <clears throat> See, we had a lot of makeup before now, but we're usually real fighting, you know, fists and everything. That's why I have to wear all these chains all the time. No, 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 no. Oh. Annie Lennox and Dave Stewart are here. 
you folks uh, created quite a stir, or I guess more accurately, you created quite a stir at the uh, Grammy Awards. Let's take a look. Uh, we have uh, a still photograph of uh, your appearance there now. Now, of course, we, we recognize uh, David. Now, he's the one with the dark hair. Now, who is who is the guy on the right? What is the deal there? Well, he's called Earl. That's he's Earl. A, yeah. Uh huh. He's an ex-boyfriend of mine, actually. Now, is is Earl a real person? Well, sure, he's real. He is. Uh, now, did people did people know who that was when when Earl came out on stage? They, some of them knew. Some, I think. Do you think they knew? I got a bit of a shock myself. <laughs> uh, but now, do you do you dress up like Earl a lot? Uh, I think do you better cut the program. Me questions about people like well, only occasionally, you know. Yeah, mm. but now, but that was actually you, wasn't it? Well, yeah. Okay, now, now, why would a person? Why? What was the the purpose behind that? Well, you know, a thing like the Grammy Awards is such a. It's the heart of the music industry. It's right. part of the, the entire establishment, you know. Everybody's in there patting themselves on the backs. Everybody thinks it's wonderful to be so famous, blah blah blah. And I just thought, or we just thought, we were invited to appear, you know. And we just thought there, there was no point in being there uh, as people know us, you know, in this kind of predictable sort of way. Yeah. I think in a way, you see, um, everybody, because we're always wearing different things and only wears different wigs and such like, everybody thinks we're a real sort of fashion hip band and we'll be in fashion spreads and all this, but really, we're, uh, we're just out to make as much money as we possibly can in the short <laughs> space. There you go. Makes plenty of sense to me. Um, so you just, you, you dressed up as Earl and you showed up and, and people didn't know what to do. Huh? Well, the thing was, you know, there was all this talk about me being a transvestite and stuff, so I thought I'd give the people what they want. Now, there, 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 had, there had been a lot of talk about that? Well, I had rumors, you know. Well, we talked a lot about it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, uh, but when you started performing, your hair wasn't always the length that it is now, was it, when you started? Well, I had a brain operation and I uh, had to get it cut and afterwards I thought it looked so good, you know? <laughs> Why not keep it? Now, uh, you didn't, you did, or did you have, you didn't have a brain operation. <laughs> well, I'd rather not talk about it again. Yeah. So you keep talking about personal things with me. It's okay, now, uh, so you had, you had the hair short and then you, you, you uh, was, was orange always the color you, uh, you wanted? Sure, I came out looking like this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, now, you were did, you were recently working in New Zealand? Yeah. And you had uh, people were stealing things from you? No, they're always stealing things from us. Yeah. Now, now, were these fans or uh, ne'er-do-wells yeah, or yeah. what? No, it was just a little incident, you know. Somebody, somebody stole my hat, you know, yeah. my, my leopard skin hat, you know. And we only had one. Now, actually. how did they steal it? Where did they get well, to it? Well, after the, after the show was finished, the lights went down. They climbed on the stage, took the hats, ran off, you know. And we didn't have any spares. So we put out all these frantic calls, you know, over the radio, please bring the hats back. So yeah. she had to go back on stage only in an overcoat, you see. Without her hats? Without my hats. Because she yeah. didn't have a hat. <laughs> and did you get them back? Sure, sure. Well, that's... They were honest people around. Yeah. Actually, one girl saw somebody walking down the street wearing it. She ran up to her, took the hat, posted it to me. Yeah. So well, that's pretty nice. unbelievable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that... Well, I don't know. It might happen in New York City. It does... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, your headquarters in London is a, a church, right? That's right, yeah. Now, how did you come, what kind of church, and how did you get in there? Well, we had a very big key, because um, <laughs> the thing is, this church was one of the only churches owned by a group of people called the Agapemonites. Now, you might not believe this story, so do you want me to carry on? Well, sure, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, these friends of ours were walking down the road, and this old lady came out and said, you must be the men that want the church. And they said, no, but we'll have it anyway. And uh, <laughs> so they gave her the, these guys a church, and this is in southeast England. And later on again, they bought another church, and then they found out both churches contained the same books. And they were written by the Agapemonites, who mm -hmm. were the first hippies in the 18th century, who were all for free love and all this kind of thing. Communal living and so yeah, on and so forth, yeah. Thing. And so this looked like the kind of church for us. <laughs> so we actually got in on the deal, and now we have half of a church 
We have a recording studio and uh, a scientific experiment room where Annie practices with her wigs and things. <laughs> and, uh, and a dancing school and all sorts of things. It's a very nice place, actually. Yeah, yeah. Now, you're going to be uh, here at the Ritz for three nights the end of March. And then are you completing a tour of the country, going on a tour of the country? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. It's part of our tour. We have 34 dates in the United States, so... There's yeah. a lot of places yeah. to see and a lot of places to visit. Well, I know, I know you folks are terribly busy and terribly successful, and congratulations <laughs> to you. Excellent. It was a pleasure Thank meeting you, you, Annie. Thank, Thank you very you. much for being here. <laughs> David, nice to see you, sir. Annie Lennox and David Stewart. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, with Ask Mr. Melman.